loser. <laughs> loser, you got fired. I'm tired of white cis women being more dedicated to being called a healer than actually doing the work to be a healer. So you're tired. Imagine how tired we are. Teacher formerly known as Rachel Dolezal loses job over OnlyFans account. Wow, Rachel. Does your pet identify as trans? Does this look like a trans dog to you? This is a straight woman of God. And she's going to heaven. I want to die. Oh, hey, you're back. Inside your nightmare? I'm your sleep paralysis demon, Blair White. Okay, you remember, you remember. Welcome back to the show, you guys. Today's theme is karma. Which is amazing, right? Because usually the types of demons and diddlers that we talk about on this show, there's never really any consequences, never really any karma. But yes, the theme of today's show is karma because a lot of these hoes are finally getting what they deserve, which I love. So first up, we have a teacher formerly known as Rachel Dolezal loses job over OnlyFans account. Wow, Rachel. If you don't know who she is, she made headlines a few years ago for being transracial, which is a touchy subject on a transgender bitch's podcast. I mean, bit touchy. She, it actually goes even deeper than her pretending to be black or identifying as black. She like lied about her heritage and said she was black and scammed her way into teaching, I think, African-American studies at a college, which <laughs> that's trifling. You could have played it cute. You could have just been, you know, I don't know, a secretary right? You could have been anything other than an African-American studies teacher and had people looking at you like, wait, is she really black? Are you African-American? I don't, I don't understand the question. Anyway, she got exposed and I always wondered like what would happen to her now? I guess this is it. It's a bit bleak. Let's see that. Oh. Damn. She looks strong, right? I feel like she could beat my ass. So I might not, let me dial back how I'm talking about her because she might just come for me. Um, here's the thing, on a real tip, I don't know why there is this seemingly very common and strong link between OnlyFans creators and teachers. Like why there are so many teachers that get outed for having OnlyFans and doing porn on the internet. It's kind of like, what is the one plus one equals two? What's the step one to step two? Oh, I'm going to do porn and then I'm also going to on the side teach. I heard she was doing. Now, this is a this is a bit of a disgusting phrase here. Race play on her OnlyFans. What that would entail, I really don't know. I don't know if that like, does that mean you are role playing? I don't know. I'm not a hoe, so I couldn't, you know, begin to question. Here's the thing. People think that I judge OnlyFans and hoes and, you know, sex workers a lot. And it's kind of like, you know, I don't. Just a little bit, but not a lot, right? Like, I believe you should be able to do that. However, once you pick that lane, you just have to be aware that it's not necessarily appropriate for you to jump into certain other lanes. Mainly anything to do with kids, right? Like, I feel like porn stars of the past probably understood that because this is like a new phenomenon people thinking that they can bust it open on only fans and then bust books open with kids like no no only one can be open bust open those books or bust up in those legs but once you pick your path that's your path and i'm quite asexual so you know i'm not a very sexual person so maybe it's not coming from the right messenger here but i do have to say i feel like society is so overly sexualized and i'm sick of it like, I, I just, like, you have half of the population on goddamn OnlyFans, right? And it's talked about as if it's just this thing you can do, like, oh, yeah, just whatever, side money. It's not side money. That's a whole decision. I had a friend who was considering doing OnlyFans, and he was like, well, maybe I'll do OnlyFans and then also do this. I'm like, what do you mean? You're either banging on camera on OnlyFans or you're, like, not, you can't expect to just go be getting regular, regular jobs like that. And that's just, I'm sorry, that's just how it is. So I'm not against people running it up on OnlyFans and busting it wide open. However, I do suggest you have a little bit of realism for when you do bust those legs open. 
Y'all are so obsessed with normalizing this. Normalize this. Normalize that. Not everything has to be fucking normal. And also, something being abnormal doesn't mean it is bad, right? Like, an OnlyFans job does not have to be treated with the same level of respect and dignity as a teacher job. Sorry. Sorry. It just isn't. Just like, honestly, my job does not have to be treated with the same respect as, like, a rocket scientist. I don't even know what the fuck a rocket scientist is. But I know it's a little more important than me running my mouth right here. So I'm not going to sit here and pretend I'm on par or that I can just leap into that. And there is a certain place in society for hoes. Some hoes are ordained. Some hoes are ordained by God. And what I mean by that is that is clearly the path they were meant to take. Maybe they're a little nasty and that's just the correct career decision for them, right? And for those people, I say, go do your big one. However, there is a certain amount of stigma that I think sometimes is warranted, right? Like, good example, I'm a fucking tranny. It should be normalized to the extent that you are not harassed and or hurt on the street. I should not be denied a job and or house, however. You can see what happens when something's too normalized, right? Like every 12-year-old thinks they can cut their dick off and like be okay with it. And parents are just so okay with it. Keep the kids' dicks on. And it's not that I'm some prude, but I do feel like society is just too sexualized in general. You got little kids singing, what's that song? Pussy Pink, The Butthole is Brown. My coochie pink, my booty hole brown. That's nasty. You got kids singing it. I don't want to live in a world where kids are singing about that. I just don't. I'm sorry. When I was a kid, I was singing Britney Spears. And like at least her shit, even when she was doing some host songs, they were innuendos. If you seek Amy. It wasn't just my butthole's brown. Ew. It's fucking disgusting. Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago hosts gay wedding. Wow. Moment of silence for all the people that are shocked. Okay, moment's over because if you have even a remotely accurate grasp of who Trump is, this is not shocking at all, actually. The idea that Trump hates gay people, this has been one of my biggest pet peeves. See, y'all are so obsessed and y'all are so scripted, right, that you have a line when it comes to Trump. Well, I'm not voting for Trump because he's racist, xenophobic, homophobic, transphobic. Like, these are just like Pokemon, gotta catch them all words for you stupid bitches. So you will just list all these things, whether they're accurate or not. And I don't really care. The argument that he hates gay people is what? Because he's the first Republican president to support gay marriage. He had a gay flag on stage. Bitch, I'm a whole tranny. I don't have a gay flag in my house. I don't. This is called an ally. Let me know when one of y'all hoes love gay people so much that you have a gay wedding in your house. Because I support gay marriage and God bless the gays, but stay out of my house. Don't come around here. No gay parties and or weddings in my house because I know how y'all get down. That debauchery, right? Like, I'm not cleaning up that mess all attend and leave at an appropriate hour, probably around 11 p.m., right? I'm not making it to the a.m.s with y'all because I know how y'all party, but Trump said, come over. What a week. I mean, sweeping, clearing you hoes on Super Tuesday and having a gay wedding in his house. That's a lit week. And of course, some people, you know, some of the simpletons. Hi, simples. Hey, simples. Yeah, simples. I see you. Um, some of the simples, right, are probably going to be in the comment section saying, oh, this is just a publicity stunt. This is just to get the gay vote. Y'all really think he needs the gay vote? He'd probably prefer to have it, but to pretend as if it's a publicity stunt, I mean, not really. In fact, He's so standing on business as it relates to the gays. He's so on his ally shit for real that he's probably alienating more of the like older, very religious, conservative Christian Republicans that don't like that he had a gay, we gay wedding in his house. So he's taking a slight L for y'all. That's how much he fucks with y'all. And you're lucky he does. Because frankly, the LGBT community has weathered quite a bit of people. I'm quite weathered from y'all. Like I love y'all. Right. But sometimes I am trying to keep my distance quite a bit. Trump said, no, come in my house. <laughs> I mean, this is really not very Hitler of him, right? This is not very literally Hitler of him. Like y'all try to paint him. Here's the thing. I understand not liking Trump. What I don't understand is hating Trump. And let me break that down for y'all. Because I know a lot of y'all are starting to spin by me even saying that. 
because my head's not so deep in my own dirt, I do understand people who have different political opinions than me. And so when they look at Trump, they don't like him. What I don't understand is the hates. The hates. Because as far as I'm seeing, there's nothing really that you can hate about him. And when someone hates him, I know that it's usually, almost always, because they've been brainwashed in some form or fashion. Nine times out of ten, the hoes that hate him are going to be the ones that say, oh, well, you know, he made fun of a disabled reporter. It didn't happen. Oh, well, he said this about Charlottesville. Complete warping of the fucking audio. You know, oh, he hates gay people. How? 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 You can dislike the job he did as our president and that he's going to do again. However, to hate him is to really reveal that you've been, you know, psyoped a bit which is quite tragic, and we're going to try to wake you up, but let me know when one of y'all love gay people so much that you have a gay wedding in your house. In your house. Not just attend it, in your house, like Trump did. Then you're on the same level of fucking with the gays as Trump. And then you can, you know, split hairs and go toe-to-toe with seeing who loves them more. But until then, Trump's winning on that front, for sure. And if Trump had that after party, then you know he loves the gays. And Trump's a New Yorker. Trump's been around gays his whole life. Trump's been around people like that. It's like, you just, you don't hate gay people when you have them around you. You just don't. And so the argument that he hates gay people is none. I mean, it's just none. Oh, and remember when Trump let that one, um, that tranny, the beauty pageant girl, whatever it's called, when he was doing the Miss, was it Miss Universe or Miss America? It was Miss Miss Universe. In 2012, he reversed the ban on transgender contestants. He welcomed the participation of Jenna Talakova. Jenna Talakova. A 23-year-old transgender woman. Hello. It was obvious to us that she was entitled to compete. If Jenna should win in Canada in that pageant, can she compete in the world Miss Universe pageant? Yes. In the future, can transgender women compete in Miss Universe? Yes. I feel great about it. Listen, y'all really are lucky that you don't have this self-fulfilling prophecy with it because Sometimes when you tell people enough that, you know, you accuse people of hating you enough, they just start to. It's like, well, you're going to tell me I hate you so much, right? You just go on and on with this narrative that he's this bigot, that he's this, like, he's literally Hitler. It's like, you're lucky he's not just walking in that role. But y'all have this narrative, right, about Republicans, about conservatives, that they hate gay people. And so it's so hard for you to stray from your programming. I mean, my God, you've been tucked and plucked and pulled all throughout your little brains that... You have a hard time divorcing the idea that a, pro- a Republican cannot hate gay people, but some of them fucking don't. And you're lucky some of them don't because some of y'all really push it. You tell people over and over again how much they hate you when they really don't. Sometimes they start to. Sometimes they start to have that resentment. I'm like, okay, if this is the story you're writing here, who am I to stop you? If you're just so insistent that I hate you, then fuck you, bitch. Next, we have that karma that I promised you at the top of the episode. Fuzz99 quite a stupid handle uh got fired woke teacher got fired finally these busted crusted disgusted nasty ass like adult with a child's brain bitches are getting fired which i've been saying needs to happen how y'all keep hiring these woke ass teachers i really don't know but maybe people are starting to wake up fuzz 99 this is the most cringe And when I say cringe, it's like they need to put this egghead motherfucker in the dictionary for cringe, right? What are hormone blockers and how do they affect your body? Well, I'm glad you asked. Hormone blockers are a series of injections and or an implant that you can have put in your arm that temporarily pauses puberty. Oh, what do you mean temporarily pauses puberty? For people assigned male at birth, puberty blockers will decrease facial hair and body hair growth and will limit eggplant growth. (laughs) And for people assigned female at birth, hormone blockers will prevent booby growth and getting your period. (laughs) No more periods. (laughs) Ooh. It's hard for me to even look at this motherfucker. I can't even look at him straight. Stay in my peripheral, sir, ma'am, Miss Pam. I would rather shit on my hands and clap 
than watch a full video from this egghead motherfucker. I really would. This rainbow Nazi, right, got up on camera and completely lied about why he was fired. Is it he or she? I really don't know. Because it's giving nothing. It's actually giving nothing at all. And so you have to wonder, like, if it's giving nothing. It's just giving dweeb. It's giving dork. It's giving loser. <laughs> loser, you got fired. Hey. <laughs> Oh my God, I never really laugh at people's downfall, but I'm just feeling a bit sick today. And I might do that, right? So before we watch this video of lies of Manelli, we're going to just say a few things up front. He's lying about why he got fired. So he says he got fired because he's queer. Oh, he got fired because he's queer. What he really got fired for was having thirst traps as a teacher, posting thirst traps. Why y'all feel the need to be hoes and teachers at the same damn time? Pick a lane. You can pick genders, but you can't pick lanes. Like, pick a fucking lane and stay in it. So let's watch this sob story. I was recently hate crimes for being queer. And as a result of me being hate crimes for being queer, it ultimately led to me being fired from my job as a high school substitute. The audacity of this bitch. The audacity of this bitch to say, he was hate crimes. So you're Matthew Shepard now? You're the mother, you're the, you're the victim. You're Matthew Shepard now. You got fucking hate crime. Getting fired is being hate crimes now, apparently. No. One of the things, I don't know if y'all pick up on this. One of the things I hate most about modern life is how many people talk like they're an algorithm. I was recently hate crime from my job for being queer. And as a result of me being hate crime because I was queer, bitch, you already said that. You're just really trying to hit that algorithm so hard, right? Like, if y'all don't start talking like you're human, my God. I hate making content this like fake this. fake bitch. I love making people laugh and smile and forget about- You hate playing the victim? It's your favorite thing, baby girl. Baby boy, baby there. That's your favorite thing. That's the role you know the best. I love helping people feel comfortable in their bodies and always preach that there's nothing ever wrong with being you. And that Comfortable is the last word I would describe anyone who watches this egghead's content. You feel comfortable watching this? Because <laughs> I'm a bit shook. Right now in America, Queer teachers are under attack and are constantly being targeted and kicked out of the classrooms for being who they are and for helping students feel welcome. Right now in America, correction, kids are under attack by queer teachers. Actually, you got it backwards. You're quite backwards. You're quite crooked. And I was being targeted by hateful extremist groups and really blew up online. Hateful extremists. And the caption is, what did I just watch? The barometer for hate that y'all eggheads have. If I had written that caption talking about you, it would have been a lot harsher than what did I just watch? Because I know what I just watched. A weird ass psychopath. You're the type of motherfucker who is a laugh away from a tear. You're the type of motherfucker that you're going to wake up. Say this is a knife. He will just be... At the end of your bed one night. And if you have shit to say about it, it's because he's queer. If you kick him out of your house after he tries to kill you, he's going to call it a hate crime. Sick. You're just gay. And that's sad. Particularly by that one cis lady who is accused of inciting bomb threats against schools, libraries, and hospitals. And who also just got appointed to an advisor position on the Oklahoma Educational State Department's Library Committee, which is a whole nother mess that we're not going to get into right now. Oh, Oklahoma, the state where they had the videos coming out with the kids licking the teacher's feet and shit. That, that, Oklahoma, yeah, maybe they need 
libs of TikTok and her fucking ass up in there stopping that shit. Were you going to stop it? Were you going to stop the kids from licking the teacher's feet? Probably not. The freshmen had a very hard time adjusting to the fact I worked at that school and freaked out on the daily because I worked at Maybe if you're disrupting the learning environment for children, you shouldn't be there at all, right? Maybe that was justification enough for your ass to be fired. But no, as you're going to see, he was fired for thirst traps. Because you just got to bust it open as a teacher, apparently. That's just part of the gig now. Hey, Rachel Dolezal. Hey, Fuzz99. I got a gut-sinking feeling in my stomach and realized something more serious was going on, and I had no clue what it was. When I walked into the meeting, my HR manager asked me if I knew why I was here. I said I had no idea, besides wanting to talk about my social media posts. They then pulled out a yellow folder and slid two screenshots of two thirst traps across the table to me. And I was just like, oh my God. And you think that that's okay. I mean, I just like, I've always known that this LGBT shit is often just used as scapegoats for basic bitches, right? So the scapegoat is that you were queer bash, you were hate crimes because you're Matthew Shepard, but in reality, it's because you were being a little nasty. As if, who exactly are you trapping? Who exactly is feeling thirsty by anything you post? I really, that's your biggest L right there. You think getting hate crimed is your L? You think getting fired is your L? No, nope. posting those damn thirst traps. Whoever saw those got hate crimed, baby. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> Again, I would rather shit on my hands and clap than see those. And frankly, a motherfucker like this shouldn't be working with kids. Like, he did a whole TikTok about how being straight is somehow bad. Nobody wants to be straight. How dare you, bitch? How dare you, bitch? See, people like this think that their hate can only go one way. They think that they, you know, they can dish it out, but they can't take it. But, you know, this is, you know, a recent trend with these nasty hoes getting fired. Thank God. Non-binary Alaska teacher, Fletch Fletcher. That's your name? Anyways, is suspended from Diamond High School after lives of TikTok exposed them for wearing tight dresses to school that displayed outline of male genitals. Now... This video is straight up you moose knuckling it about four feet from a child's head. You belong in prison, baby. You're lucky you were just fired, Fletch Fletcher. Your ass should have been in jail. And you can just tell, like, some of y'all just need to believe your eyes sometimes. Like, look at this picture. You want to tell me that this person wouldn't do exactly what he then did. And that you couldn't see that by looking at him. I don't get it. I, some of y'all never really been through shit. And how trusting you are really shows that. Like, I would clock this nasty ass from a few miles away and be like, don't come near me. Stay away. Definitely don't come near kids. And yet somehow these people keep getting fired. Some of y'all just never been through shit. It is so clear that the issue isn't even with teachers being queer well that's an issue honestly stop fucking calling yourselves queer that's annoying it's embarrassing it's tragic but if you're you know gay or transgender you know the actual phrases for these things like the issue isn't even with you being those things as a teacher it's so clearly an issue with the fact that leftists in general have gotten to a point where they have no course correction on the radicals and there's just so many radicals that the average like leftist teacher is going to want to indoctrinate people not just teach them or even have a bias like they go into this shit trying to groom people trying to groom students that is the issue hi i'm a queer teacher kids as young as three and four are actually aware of their gender identity even if they don't have the language for it so very aware of who they like and who they don't like They're very much ready for these topics and are way more accepting than adults when it comes to discussing these topics we can talk about gender gender assumptions pronouns all the things it's not that you have your own beliefs I'm sure there are many, you know, in red states, conservative teachers who make it a point to try to push their politics on people, but never to the point where it's like, oh, I'm pushing you to cut your dick off, right? A conservative teacher trying to push their politics on you is like, hey, like, we probably shouldn't pay taxes. Hey, like, we probably shouldn't let everyone and anyone over the border. And y'all are like, hey, you should, like, cut off your breath and, like, take hormones. 
it's really not the same level of indoctrination. I'm sorry to tell you. Like politics don't have any place in the classroom, but at the end of the day, even if they do seep in, there should be a baseline level of like expectation that, that the politics that do seep in don't involve like dismembering children, right? Like Jeffrey Dahmer doesn't need representation in kids' classrooms. Sorry to say. See, here's the thing. If you're conservative, right-wing, Republican, whatever, you'll get fired just for breathing that you like Trump, right? Like you could be under your breath, hush, hush, like it is just known that you're a Trump supporter, fired, right? Whereas if you're a leftist and get hired and include your politics in that job, you can be straight up grooming kids for years without any consequences. That one teacher in Canada, the big, the big boob, the big boob, never got fired. I think he quit and that was sick. And what was even sicker was that y'all were laughing at that. People were laughing at it because it was so goofy. And like, it, again, a lot of y'all haven't been through shit. You can't recognize perverts when you see a pervert. So for me, I'm like, he's acting out a fetish in front of kids. And even right when people were like, oh my God, this is so funny. I think he's like making a joke out of it to prove the woke shit stupid. Y'all are stupid. All y'all are stupid. Sometimes I get, I just like, sometimes I literally get down about how like everyone's fucking stupid. Except for me. Does your pet identify as trans? Wow. I hate this for me. I hate that I have to read this. I want to die. Um, apparently, I regret to inform you that this is real. I regret to inform you there are some of y'all who really think this. Does this look like a trans dog to you? This is a straight woman of God. And she's going to heaven. Unlike y'all. Look at this uh, form to get a new kitten that people are starting to get. You have to put in a gender identity for a kitten that you want to adopt. It has male, female, gender neutral, <laughs> non-binary, or prefer not to say. We're going to go with prefer not to say. Everyone just shut the fuck up at this point. I'm, I'm going to need a few moments of silence because y'all are so stuck on stupid at this point. I just, I can't. This $2 trick. Y'all remember this one? Who got naked at the White House? Happy Pride Month. Can we take a little video? Hi, Mr. President. It is an honor of France rights and human rights. This is the loser. My dog, much like myself, was assigned male at birth. However, we are both girls. Here's your friendly reminder that gender is a human made construct that is not based in reality. When it comes to animals, dogs don't care about gender, but humans do. Hera, for example, has never once lifted her leg to pee. She is not territorial. However, she has humped one dog that has humped her and she has humped her own toy once. And to Hera, it makes no difference if I put her in a dress, if I put her in bows. What makes no sense to me is how people care more about respecting the- You know what? I was gonna say something, but I'm just gonna let God fix this one. Cause if I fix it, I'm going to jail. I'm going to jail. Like just when I thought this bobblehead couldn't get any more stupid, here it is. Here's the moment. It's your moment. You're shining. You somehow doubled down on that stupid shit. What makes no sense to me is how people care more about respecting the gender of my dog than they do myself and other transgender individuals. So this is your reminder to treat people like you would treat a dog. Treat people like you would treat a dog. Tell me you have no goddamn self-respect without telling me you have no goddamn self-respect. I mean, you are quite filthy. You should be kept outside, right? So actually, I have no problem treating you like a dog. Woof, woof, bitch. Because taking your top off at the White House is quite beast-like, right? Quite beasty. Ask people for their name and pronouns and share your own. And never assume someone's gender identity because someone's appearance and someone's body does not always equate to their gender identity. Wow. You know, I never really thought about it like that. You really put two and two together and gave us nothing. You gave us nothing. I was thinking about this the other day. I was like, you know what? It's interesting how the closer the proximity people 
are to trans activism, the less they fuck with trans people. Like the further that trans activism creeps its way into your life, the more resentment you're likely going to have. It turns allies into either neutral or against trans people. It turns people who are just neutral into complete haters of trans people. And it turns haters into even bigger haters. It never makes people like trans people more, the activism side of it. And why y'all are so glued to all these tactics that just don't work. Like, you know, trying to educate people on what you are by like relating yourself to a dog it's not quite clicking it's not quite clicking taking your top off of the white house not quite clicking transing your dog not quite clicking doesn't make anyone respect you more it's actually the opposite it's the opposite that's how it works it makes people think you're fucking nuts like if you ever want to look at how effective trans activism is and just you know tuck the temperature they turned jk rowling anti-trans you know what an accomplishment that is jk rowling is the person who changed Dumbledore to gay halfway through the series. J.K. Rowling is the person that like made Hermione black. Like J.K. Rowling is far from a fucking conservative right-wing Nazi. Like, and y'all managed to turn her anti-trans. That's sick. That's sick. But I'm the one doing it wrong, right? Boy, why the problem? No, no. And part of it is that y'all lie to these people. Y'all will be in the comment section supporting these people being like, oh my God, I totally get it. It's like, you're a dog. No. No. I'm just wondering when this shit is going to hit a fever pitch. Like, when are people going to be just so sick? And how bad does it have to get before y'all turn people off so bad that there is just no redemption ever? That y'all have to go live in the shadows or some shit because y'all have exhausted people's tolerance or trans people so hard. It's like... You're fucking with women. You're fucking with kids. And now, innovator. What an innovator. Now we got to fuck with dogs and pets. It's just like, if I have some advice for Rose Montoya, it's pick a gutter. Any gutter. Fall out of public life. Fall out of the public eye. You humiliated yourself. You humiliated the entire trans community, taking your fucking top off at the White House. I mean, that's just humiliating, embarrassing, tragic, disgusting, out of line, like off the wall, like sick. You were blessed with the honor of representing trans people in a potentially positive light and you took your fucking top off. And this is your sequel? This is your sequel. Hey guys, I'm the one that uh, took my top off and embarrassed the trans community. Well, guess what? Sequel, we're now transing our dogs. Like, you need help. Immediately. Now. Yesterday. Someone should have helped your ass out yesterday. All right. Let's react to some woke TikToks. Being misgendered can be an incredibly painful experience. Hi, my name is Tempest. And if you don't want me to step on your toes, move your fucking feet. Oh my god. Y'all swear you live in an anime. Tempest. <laughs> what kind of stupid ass name? Tempest. See, what y'all don't talk enough about is these trans guys, right? That don't actually transition, but these trans men, they literally just watch like gay anime and they construct their idea of manhood. That's how absent men are right now in the family unit. That their idea of manhood is the gay anime they watched. Tempest. Girl, shut the fuck up. I want to die. Sometimes I feel like I really did die. Like, I was thinking about this the other night when I was a little bit, right? What if... I died. What if we all died? We're literally in purgatory right now. Because surely that 2012 shit must have been real. We've been dead since 2012, babe. Because this cannot be real life. Y'all cannot be this fucking nasty. And one thing about it, I know I want to talk as a tranny, but I am so glad that I have felt 
the feeling of getting cracked in my face as a kid. Not promoting that. Not promoting that towards this individual. However, let's just say if in a different timeline, this individual had ever felt what it's like to have someone hit you in the face, you know, as a child or whatever, talking about, you know, fights in school, whatever. I don't think this is how he would end up. If you get it, you get it. When you know, you know. Tired of white cis women being more dedicated to being called a healer than actually doing the work to be a healer. The only thing that you're worried about healing is your bruised ego. So you're tired. Imagine how tired we are. Exhausted. This looks exhausting. This is just misery. Misery is all I see. She's weathered. She's wilted. I'm actually starting to feel bad for her. I am. Being confronted with your complacency in genocide and your obsession with upholding privilege. We do not need more nice white women. Are you kidding me? And stop asking marginalized people to do the work for you because you don't feel comfortable with it. What are you even talking about? What language is this? What fucking language is this, sis? My God. Can somebody get this bitch as Annex? A little CBD. We'll even take some ashwagandha on deck. Like, she needs something. She needs something. People like this will never realize that they are the ones that perpetuate the hate they claim to be fighting. You have become the monster you are claiming to fight. I have never seen a more hateful person. People like this will also never understand that they are just doing a different version of that KKK motherfucker. You have found a group to blame. You have found a group to hate, which is nice women. And the saddest part is that your justification for it is that they're nice. And that has led you to, let me, you guys need to stop being nice, bitch. You need a drop of that niceness because let's not forget, it's still giving white woman. It's still giving white woman. The white woman jumped out and they just jumped back in because also ain't no man talking like this. And the reason why this person hates white women so much is because that's what you're running from. There's a white woman inside of you and you're running. There's absolutely a Karen living up in that bitch and you're running. She's a runner, she's a track star from that white woman living inside of her. I can't help but note that part of the, you know, characteristics of people who, when I look at them, I don't see a trans person. Usually on that lineup is that they're running from, they hate whatever they're transitioning from. Like all these trans women and you know, trans people who just hate men. Trans men who just hate white women. It's like, bitch, I don't hate men. I love men, right? Just because I was born a man doesn't mean I hate what that is, right? Like, it just wasn't right for me. <laughs> like, you are clearly running from that white woman. What you need to do is take a nice, long, warm shower, go sit in front of that mirror, and hug that white woman inside of you. Say, white woman, it's okay. We're going to be okay. But calm the fuck down because you're stressing me out. Oh, here's this trick. Today's pronouns of the day are TV static. Okay, now I know you must be like, what in the world is this person talking about? What TV static pronouns? Well, yes, these are actually neo pronouns. So here's how you would use TV TVs. And here's how you would use static statics. It's just like if someone were to use he, they, or she, they, you use both she, her pronouns and they, them pronouns. So it's just the same kind of thing, just with two neo pronouns. Why would someone want to use this? Sometimes neo pronouns can represent how a person is feeling, maybe within gender, because gender doesn't feel good to everybody out in this world. So maybe their gender feels like static. Maybe it's because someone's feeling stuck, maybe because they can't feel like they can open up to people and come out to people. I mean, and maybe people who feel that way should be helped out of that, not encouraged to identify as static, right? Right? Y'all are so fucking diseased for letting this little girl run amok like this. Where are the real ass people in this fucking community? I know there's a few others besides me, but goddamn. Are we that outnumbered that she is not just getting dragged off the internet by actual trans people, actual gay people, actual whatever? Bring back hobbies. This little girl needs to go create some art or something because creating shit on TikTok is just not the best use of your time, baby girl. Like, I, I don't even know what to, what to say. And here's the gag of it, right? If you're a loser, 
you look at content like this and be like, well, doesn't affect me. Well, you know, if people want to do what they want to do, I don't know. I don't know. Well, you know what? I agree people should do what they want to do. But when you're spreading this kind of bullshit and you're making it some sort of declaration within the trans community, it's somehow, somehow conflating this with being trans, that's when I have an issue. I have an issue, baby, with you. So tell me how we somehow lost the last 20 minutes of footage of this episode and how it was only noticed the next day. I had the option to say the boys and girls of the Blair White Army are only getting a 40 minute episode this week, but I'm not going to do that to y'all. I'm not going to do y'all dirty like that. So we're just going to keep going and act like, you know, nothing ever happened. This is Danny Lalanders a non-binary game developer for EA, specifically the Marvel games, which y'all know, you know, Marvel's pretty woked out now. Were they always woked out? I don't think so, right? They just hopped on the train to hell. So she says she doesn't hire white people because they're unsafe and it's hard to work with them and only hires people of color. Let's listen to her babble. Team of 21 right now uh, for validate. It's a pretty big team. It's a crazy big team. We have no white people on our team. Um, I did that because I wanted to create a safe environment. And I know the best way for an environment to be safe is to be around people who are just like me. Um, and I'm not saying that white people in the industry are creating safe, unsafe environments. I'm not saying that. That is not what I'm saying. I am saying that sometimes it is hard to work with white people because they think that something may be okay, but it was really a microaggression. And no one wants to deal with that while they're trying to make a game that they love. Who, I was going to say raised this bitch, but who created this bitch? Because this is a person made in a lab. How are you a real person? It's unsafe around white people because they might commit a microaggression, which is the funniest word because if it's so small that you have to refer to it as micro, right? Maybe it's not worth running your mouth about. And baby, you're not non-binary, you're nonsensical. You make no sense. You make sense to racists, right? So you're hiring other people who feel the same as you, like they don't wanna see a certain race in the room, so no one's ever gonna call you on your BS, but hi. My name is Blair White. You're a moron. Just so you know, I know none of your, you know, woked out commie comrades would ever tell you that, but you're the problem. I would venture to guess that whatever micro, right, aggression that any white people, you know, make the horrible mistake of committing around you is probably nothing in comparison to the macro aggression, the aggression aggression of saying that you're not going to hire people of a certain race. And why y'all are so sick in the head that this kind of stuff just flies under the radar, that people can just say this and there's never any consequences because of the color of her skin, I just don't understand. See, this is the problem with progressivism is that there's never any moment where you recognize when progress has been made. You never get to the finish line. At what point, and put it in the comments, I'm just curious, at what point do you think it's appropriate to say, wow, we really made all the progress? So now maybe we don't have to accept racial hatred at all, regardless of who it's like aimed at. Like, I don't understand. And y'all can make fun of this issue of like white people saying that they're not getting hired because they're white. It's real. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry to be the bear of real news, right? Like the shit that's really going on. But living in LA, I knew many white people that, would, that were so qualified and would go just years not getting a job to the point where I knew a lot of white people that would fake or write down that they are mixed with certain races or they are, you know, LGBT of some sort. White people I knew in LA were putting down, whether they were or weren't, that they were bisexual or queer or non-binary, even though they weren't, just because they wouldn't get jobs otherwise. And everyone I know who did that, they would end up getting a job rather quick with, with, a, with a swiftness, right? So it's an issue, and I know y'all just love having your head in the dirt, and so when there's an issue, right, like you're going to be like 10 years late to it, and maybe that's just my curse, right? Like I just pick up on things soon, and I'm not even bragging. It's like I don't like that I pick up on things like 10 years before other people because it's not exactly the easiest life. You be getting discounted. You People act like you're crazy. People, Blair White's a Nazi. It's like I was getting called a Nazi for shit I was saying in 2016, and now it's like mainstream. Everyone's talking like that. I hate y'all.
And, you know, in a world that makes any sense, this non-binary, nonsensical individual would be investigated for this open racism, right? And admitting that they are discriminating in their hiring practices. But you know she won't. You know she won't. She's probably going to get a raise. Oh, let's see what this one's about. Just because I'm fat, that doesn't invalidate the things that I say. She died. You ready to get supersized? She died too. I've got three McDonald's breakfast sandwiches. Which one's the best? He's dead. Join me on my fat positive radio show. Which didn't last long because she died. How interesting. That was a word for word, not one word off, right? She studied that real basic script, made sure there was one word off. Just because I'm fat, that doesn't invalidate the things that I say. She died. You ready to get supersized? She died too. Today I've got the big fruit loop. <laughs> He's dead. Join me on my fat positive radio show. Which didn't last long because she died. It is so not easy being the blueprint for these basic bitches. It's really not. Like I said, it is a hard knock life just being ahead of the curve. Saying shit first. And then watching the robots repeat it. Very sad, very tragic. If you're the type of content creator to do this type of thievery, in fact, it's not really content creation if it's content stealing, right? That's not really creation, I'm the creator. You're the peasant who picked up the scraps. That's sad. It is, you know, difficult just being the sauce. Being the source, being the sauce, it's, it's, it's not easy. Anyone who says this is a life of ease, of luxury, it's really not. Waking up and being a bad bitch every day is traumatizing. It's hard. And I ask God, why am I cursed with being a bad bitch every day? And the message I hear is, if it's not you, then who? And so I continue on. Next. Oh, this one's demented. If y'all aren't aware, there's a new program with Lyft to match up non-binary and trans drivers with women and other non-binary and trans passengers. And uh, it's going about as well as you expect, or at least I would expect, because again, when you're ahead of the curb, you can just see train wrecks coming. And this is a train wreck. Hi, I'm Davey, and this is Maxine, and we have been driving with Lyft for over six years. You just named your car? That is the manliest thing you could have done. Start out the video, this is Maxine. Wow. The man really jumped out. And then he jumped back in. And Maxine and I are getting ready to go out driving tonight, but we're going to try something new for the first time in those six years. We're going to turn on the Women Plus Connect feature. Women Plus Connect is a feature that matches women and non-binary drivers with more women and non-binary riders. Women Plus Connect gives women and non-binary drivers the option to turn on a preference that will prioritize matches with other nearby women and non-binary riders. Women Plus Connect first launched in September of last year in select early access cities, but now they're expanding it nationwide. I'm so excited. This feature offers more control over the driving experience for women and non-binary people, allowing them to feel more confident in the car. All right, time to get driving. Imagine he just hit somebody before the camera goes off. Fools of Caitlin. Uh, sorry, Kate. Listen, why can't it just be a woman connect? Like, why is it women and non-binary? Like, is there an option for a woman to just connect with women drivers? Or I guess that would be a problem because then y'all want to confirm that they're women. This is sick. And listen, what exactly makes you a safer option for women to be in the presence of? Because the Party City wig isn't really feeling that safe to me. If that's the one thing, oh no, this isn't a man picking you up. It's a man in a wig. Like, I don't understand. I really don't understand. And I always say this, the biggest disconnect with me and all these trans people you know, how trans just means party city wig now, right? The biggest disconnect is like, it, they never have the respect and understanding of women's safety, right? They have no actual understanding because I would feel so incredibly unsafe being in the car with this person. And I am not a biological woman. I would feel incredibly unsafe. And considering the entire process here for you to signing up for the non-binary woman connect feature on this app, right? Is putting the wig on. What about that is safer? Like someone can't harm a woman if they're wearing a wig? Is, is that really how y'all think? I genuinely think it is. I genuinely think that y'all 
again, I was talking earlier in the show, how about a lot of people never been through shit, right? If you've never been through shit, you might be, you know, your defenses might be lowered when you see a wig. For me, rideshare has always actually been terrifying. Like, I refuse to ever get Ubers and Lyfts at night. I know that's hard because that's the time when you really want to use it when you're out drinking or turning up or whatever. But for me, it's like someone's taking me home, baby. Someone I know. I'm not getting in a strange car with a man. And I've always found it weird that that's just so normalized, right? Like, again, a lot of y'all never been through shit. So getting in a strange man's car, wig or not, is not going to seem like something that may be threatening your immediate safety. But girl, you still got a dick. So what's the wig? What's the wig got to do with it? What does the wig have to do with it? And you know what? I have to live out for a second. Can I live out? Can I be a feminazi for a second? I find it offensive and disgusting that there actually is a meaningful conversation happening between women right now about ride shares and how scary they can be. I see women talking about it all the time online about how they were almost sex trafficked or the driver was really sketchy. I've had drivers hit on me. I've had drivers make very inappropriate statements, um, you know, trying to become friends or hook up after the, you know, asking for my number, like really inappropriate shit. And it's really scary. There's a real conversation happening about women and safety and rideshare. And Lyft's response is, oh, we'll just connect them with men who put on wigs. That's the solution. Oh, thank God Lyft fixed it, right? Don't you see this as a way to just demonize men? No. No, I, I mean, at the end of the day, that's why I said, like, let me live out for a second. Like, men are often a problem and women have issues with ride shares. I, I've had these issues before. And it, it's like, you probably haven't experienced anything like that. Obviously, you haven't because you're a man. But it's like, this is a real problem. And the fact that it's being addressed like this is sick. It's actually sick. And it's just like, when you know, you know, right? And it's like, the reason why I know is because I'm actually trans, which means I actually transition, which means I get preyed upon by creepy men. This person has no concept of that party city wig. You don't because you're just a man. And that's I'm glad you never had that happen. I don't wish it for you, but I don't wish it for women. So the idea that the solution to that problem is we won't pair you with men anymore. We'll pair you with men with wigs on. Like, are you? <laughs> that's just how I feel. I mean, that makes sense, right? Yeah. Woke influencer unintentionally creates epic campaign ad for Trump. Let's see. You may have heard of Project 2025, but this is from Agenda 47. And you can read all of these on his website. First, he promises that he will carry out the largest domestic deportation operation in history. Get out! He will also ask for the death sentence for anyone convicted of human trafficking. He will close the Department of Education and return all education standards to the states to decide. He will put prayer back into school and he will criminalize any race-based advantage programs. He will end the Affordable Care Act. He will ban gender-affirming care for adults and children, and he will ban any federal dollars from going towards gender-affirming care, which means anyone with government-provided health care will no longer be able to access gender-affirming care except for... They love lying about that, by the way. Like, can I just say, that's a complete fucking lie. Trump has not promised you ban it for adults. And why y'all run with this sick lie? I see it everywhere. And then you look at what they quote from Trump saying, and he is specifically talking about kids. But, you know, y'all are big on those self-fulfilling prophecies. So if you want it that bad, keep pushing for it, bitch. I'll always figure out a way to get my E. I swear to God, I will. I don't care. Girl, I will, I will always figure out a way to keep my transition going. But keep pushing it. Y'all might lose access to that shit if that's what you want so damn bad. Anytime I see someone, I get tagged in this shit, right? Like, I'm the right-wing trainer, so I get tagged in this shit. I'll get tagged by libs talking about, Blair, what do you think about him saying this? He's going to ban gender from in care. And it's always, always, always in the context of kids. Not once has he made the declaration that it's for adults. And again, you're lucky he's not. You're lucky he's not because clearly you want it so damn bad. You're manifesting it. You're speaking it into existence constantly right and i will listen i will always find a way to get my shit right i will always find a way to keep the transition going maybe y'all can't because apparently y'all can't even afford this always kills me by the way y'all talk about how hormone prescriptions and it's just so inaccessible to people and y'all complain about the cost my hormones cost me 30 dollars once a month 
thirty dollars. Thirty five ninety nine, right? The ones that picked up today were eleven dollars. He picked up my hormones this morning. Eleven dollars. Sorry, even I was I was overdoing it, right? In Texas, my hormones with no insurance, out of pocket, make his pockets hurt. They're really not hurting because it was eleven dollars. Eleven dollars. And this is what y'all complain about is so inaccessible. Bitch, if you just took one day out of the week dedicated to finding money on the streets, like quarters, nickels, dimes, you're going to find $11 in a few hours. And if you can't afford it, then maybe it's not time be for you to, to do access it, access gender-affirming care, except for Viagra and Cialis. Those will still be available. Which is not gender-affirming care at all. He will propose a constitutional amendment that gives a term limit to Congress. He will deploy the Department of Justice to investigate the Biden crime family and any of his adversaries or political rivals. Let's go. He will immediately pardon all of the January 6thers, and he will create a task force to investigate anyone who arrested, charged, or imprisoned a January 6er. He will increase the penalties for underage criminal offenders, strengthen immunity for police officers, and deploy the National Guard to patrol woke cities. Well, considering every four years y'all burn them down... Considering every four years, y'all just decide, we should burn this. We should burn all of this. We should kill people on the street. We should riot. We should destroy small businesses. We should have everyone living in fear. Maybe y'all should be patrolled. I mean, this one I am a bit conflicted on because I'm really not, you know, some cop sucker right like i'm not trying to suck off the cops and the national guard because honestly during all these every four years when y'all burn the shit down a lot of them don't do shit right i remember seeing tanks on my street during the covid riots of 2020 and they didn't do anything they let them do it right so at some point we got to talk about how all that's been infiltrated too but i'm really not mad at it baby boy baby girl baby they i'm really not mad at it Maybe y'all need some grown-ups to tell you, you can't set things on fire. You can't set things on fire, babe. On day one, he will reassess our participation in NATO and says that every European country needs to pay the United States for protection. He will also restore the wonderful travel ban for Muslims coming to America. So the Muslim ban. Oh, yeah, that time when he specifically paused travel. Paused wasn't a ban, ho. Pause travel from countries that Obama flagged as potential terrorist threats. Maybe if the countries that are threatening to kill us, we shouldn't be just letting flood in all at once. Like maybe that's not so crazy. And it's only crazy when you intentionally word it in a way to make it sound more inflammatory. See, the libs love to look at laws and then rebrand them to mean what's ever convenient for their argument, right? So the don't say gay bill, which wasn't called the don't say gay bill, but if you tell a you know a lib that that's the first time they've heard that they could they swear DeSantis created the don't say gay bill didn't happen didn't happen they swear Trump did the Muslim ban it's actually called Executive Order thirteen seven sixty nine apparently Google but y'all want to call it some shit to make it seem like whatever fits your narrative when in reality it was like hey these countries are threatening terrorism against America so maybe we don't just have a free for all to let anyone come over. That's called a good president. That's called a good president. And if you want to, you know, even take credit away from Trump, you can remember that uh, Obama started it. Obama identified the countries. So who are you mad at? Obama? Hmm, interesting. He will build freedom cities. This is 10 new cities built on federal land. He will award them to areas with the best development proposals, and he will prioritize moving young families to these freedom cities. Oh, my God. Hold on. Hold on. How dare he not do what y'all do? The woke saviors, right? How dare he not look at sick, drug addicted, mentally ill, depressed people on the street and say they must be happy? How dare he be like, you know what? We got to house people. We got to incentivize family. I know y'all hate family because y'all did you dirty. But you know what? Coming from a bitch whose family has done me dirty in many ways, I don't really relate to having that chip on my shoulder. And it's quite sad that you haven't worked through those issues. Although I know it's more about y'all, whether you know it or not, just falling in line with that communist manifesto, separating family from their parents, right? The playbook, destroying the family unit to destabilize the country. All the shit that's written down has been written down for a long time. Y'all are, you know, just robots, so you don't actually know what you're following. But for those of us that read, we know exactly what you're doing. And I'm not exactly shook 
about Trump building new cities and incentivizing young families to live in homes and not live in y'all's ghetto, nasty, disaster, horror-ridden cities. Horror-ridden. Like, God forbid he doesn't see people suffering and walk over them like they're just beasts on the street. The thing about liberals is they are the actual supremacists. They're the people that step over homeless, dying people on the street, right? And say, this must be how they choose to live. This is their choice. They must be happy. Nothing's wrong with them. They're unhoused. They're not homeless. They're unhoused. Please don't say homeless. They're people without a home. Conservatives are the ones, y'all know that meme, how conservatives are scared of cities. Well, you know what? Most people, most people that are normal, it's not normal to them to see people sick and dying on the streets and no one helping them. So that fear, I mean, y'all are some scary bitches. Who lets people just die on the street? I mean, that's never been something I've understood. And in fact, when I look back at, you know, living in LA, it's actually quite sick that I became one of those people that like, it was just normal for me to see people on the street shooting up. People on the street, you don't know if they're dead or alive, they're not moving. And this is the thing, a lot of y'all are suburb living people and I get it and I'm so glad you're in the suburbs and that you're safe, but you really don't know what it's like to actually vote blue, live in a blue city in a blue state like LA. It is not, it's not normal. It's, it's not a normal way for humans to live. This is just what it gets down to the real shit, right? Like we can sit here and talk about tranny shit all day and I'm never gonna vote on tranny shit. I'm gonna vote on this shit. I'm gonna vote on, oh, are people sick and dying on the streets or are they being helped? Oh, are people flooding the border or are they not? Oh, is the country more safe on the international stage or not? Oh, is our president coherent? Is he alive or dead? I really can't tell. He will kill all e-vehicles and e-vehicle legislation, seeking to replace that with the development of a flying car. <laughs> Trump is the coolest president in my lifetime. He made Space Force. And now he's talking about flying cars. And this libbed out trick and her little stupid blue hat is talking about she won't vote for him in part because of the flying cars in the future. This is also why I hate when people call progressives progressives because they're not progressive. They don't live in the future. Liberals actually live about 10 to 20 years in the past, which is why they're always hung up on things from the past, why they act like we're still living in, you know, Jim Crow. That's much farther in the past. But you see that. You see that. Pete, liberals live like Matthew Shepard's currently getting drug across the road and Jim Crow is currently in effect, right? Like, they catch up to things actually much later than conservatives. So I've never understood the argument that conservatives are in the past and liberals are in the future. Not really. She's not voting for Trump because there might be flying cars coming. Like, catch up, baby. He believes that we could create a car that vertically takes off. Hold on. We already have vehicles that take off vertically. What's a helicopter? Y'all are weird. We will push Congress to pass legislation that would give every American the right to concealed carry anywhere at any time, and he will revoke any- You're making this worse for yourself. You're making- the not one thing is hitting, babe. Not one thing is hitting. Y'all want to defund the police, and then you want to also, in the same hand, limit people's ability to protect themselves. Like, y'all are really just demons on earth. And he will revoke any gun restrictions or legislation that seeks to inhibit people's ability to own guns that's been passed in the last several years. And he will take billions and billions of dollars from private university endowments by taxing, fining, and suing the universities. He specifically names Harvard in this one. And then he will use that money to create the American Academy. It is a free online college that will be free of wokeness that he will force employers to recognize as a bachelor's degree equivalent. Y'all wanted free college so fucking bad? And these degrees aren't getting y'all any of the jobs they promised, so maybe they should be held accountable, right? Maybe they should be held accountable. And again, y'all just gotta read. Universities were the first target by the communists to infiltrate, to demoralize you as they clearly have done right so that's why college was the thing that actually made me start my channel and start fighting start swinging on you hoes i spent one year in an american college was so turned off by it by the obvious attempts at rearranging my brain making me believe obvious lies indoctrinating me making me trying to make me a communist i went to college in california babes i was so disgusted by the environment that i created a youtube channel and started talking politics and look how my life has blossomed. Thank you for everything. And that's called fighting for the light, right? You're rewarded when you fight for the light. You're living in squalor and destitute energy.
maybe not in your home, but squalor and destitute energy because you're fighting for darkness. Misgendering. Misgendering is incorrectly referring to a person's gender by incorrectly assuming their gender identity or using incorrect pronouns. It doesn't matter if your misgendering is intentional or accidental. What it really is, is harmful, disrespectful, and exhausting. We can fight misgendering by remembering that we cannot and should not be assuming anyone's gender. Our assumptions are not what define others' realities. So it doesn't matter the intention. This is the world they live in. It doesn't matter if you actually tried to harm them. It didn't matter if it was intentional, accidental. You are just as much of a, you know, heretic, a sinner. I mean, that's just a sick way to live. And I can see that it's exhausting. You look quite sleepy, right? You're asleep. Y'all call yourselves woke, but you're very much asleep, right? Wake up. And going back to that call me shit, let's, let's look at this study right here. Let me find this. 44% of millennials think referring to someone by the wrong gender should be a criminal offense. That's how much y'all have been, like I just said to this other trick, demoralized. That you are willing to give up speech rights as liberals. Y'all are willing to sell freedom and humanity and truth down the river because you don't want your feelings hurt. That's sick. And I don't care how offensive this sounds, sometimes y'all need just like a swift boot in your ass. If you're getting misgendered everywhere you go, 99% of the time, it's your fault. It's your fault for having expectations that don't line up with how you're actually showing up in the world, right? And again, this is because 99% of the time, it is accidental. I know y'all are narcissists, so you think everyone's thinking about you at all times, but most people really aren't thinking about you, babe. I promise you the most humbling thing you come to the realization of as an adult is that people don't really think about you that much. Ain't nobody going through their mind spinning. What do I call this person? What? It's instinctual. And it's based on how you look on an instinctual level. Not saying people don't in intentionally try to, you know, hurt people they think might be trans, of course, but at the end of the day, like I'm one of the most public trans people on the planet. Most places I go, especially here in Austin, Texas, like people kind of know who I am. Not everyone, obviously. I'm not fucking Beyonce, but usually at any establishment I go to, there's like one person who's like, Blair, everyone kind of knows I'm trans, whether you're clocking me or not, because I'm publicly a famous trans person. Guess who doesn't go around getting misgendered? And that's not me bragging. That's me showing up in the world a specific way. So if you're not doing that, tough shit, get it together. Sometimes things are in your control, right? And that should make you happy. That should be good news. Oh, it's in my control. I can fix it. But y'all don't want to fix your problems. You live in your problems. You live in darkness. You live in that misery. But not everyone does. And I know y'all hate being told to work, right? You hate it. But... Transition is work. It's more than a party city wig. It's a very specific life when you are a transsexual who transitions. It involves a lot of work. And as your payoff, you're going to walk into Target, CVS, right? Party city, <laughs> the bar, wherever. And people are going to see you for the internal self that you are truly bringing out. But when you're just an entitled simpleton who thinks that you can walk in somewhere with a party city wig and or a beard and still be called she... And then to you, there's just no difference between, you know, intention has no bearing. That's, that's a you problem. That's a you problem. And how you're navigating the world clearly isn't working. But sometimes you take things in your own hands. But that's if you're a creator, right? And we can get back to who's a creator and who's not, right? They're clearly replicators, right? They're replicating the life of people who created a life before them. They saw trans people transition in the past, which is inherently a creation, whether you, agree, whether you would agree with it or not, like me changing my entire presence, my name, all that, that's creating something new. And you can disagree that that's a right thing, a moral thing, or whatever thing, but back in the day, it was a thing. You created a life. Y'all want to live in the shadow of people who created and just imitate, but not take on any of the work. And that's what the real disconnect is. And y'all can sit in that misery, or you can nut up. I know you still have them because you don't believe in transitioning. Use those nuts and work. Grown men march around in high heels to protest male violence against women. Well, guess that solves that problem. I can just see it now. I can see men across America raising their fists to beat their wife. And they stop. 
Because they remember. Y'all walked around in those red high heels for a reason. And again, this just goes back to the fact that women are so in need of men being men. And I know it sounds crazy because I chose not to be a man, but at least I did it well. Y'all are flopping. Like, men, women are so in need of men just being men. And men's response is, sure, we'll put on high heels. Y'all are going to hell for that. That is it for this episode of the Blair White Projects podcast. I love you. I really do. I don't say it just to say it. I'm not a liar. I love you. And <laughs> subscribe to this podcast channel. Follow me on X and Instagram. And I'll see you in the next video. Mwah. Bye, guys.